home court Crestview Cougars taking on conference rival St. Paul in a huge early season matchup, and it's streaming directly to you on your smartphone, TV, tablet, or computer. And it all comes to you next. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top of the line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hardworking, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hello and welcome to the Cougars Den. Uh, Storm Blanchard, of course, as always, joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. Garrett, we got a good one tonight. Yeah, Storm, two Firelands Conference rivals going out of here tonight in the Cougars Den. Crestview on a Thursday night hosting the Flyers who are on the road looking to get their first one of the season. Garrett, and this uh, rivalry has a little bit something extra on it. Whenever Crestview comes to, or excuse me, whenever St. Paul comes to town, there's always just a, a little something in the air. It's typically been on the gridiron storm. These two were the competitive, fierce rivals. Crestview knocked them off this year, but now it's time to see if St. Ball can rebound on the basketball floor and kick them out of the, the, the hometown Cougar Den. As we get underway here in our first quarter, we have Fisher with a wide open three. That one's not going to find the bottom of the net. Offensive rebound not going to go as well. Stripped away by the Crestview Cougars. Austin Wells going the other way. He's going to get fouled. That'll be out of bounds for the Crestview Cougars. Garrett, St. Paul on a little bit of a uh, losing skid here as to, or excuse me, to start the season. As we take a look at the St. Paul starting lineup, Eli Fisher at guard, Caden Maxwell at post, Travis Herner at guard, Logan Rogers at guard, and Jaden Hip at post. Wells now for the Crestview Cougars. Hit kicks it over to Jarek Ringler. He had himself a good night over here at the Cougars Den versus Plymouth for the first conference matchup for the Cougars. Cash has it now, almost gets it stripped away, able to hold on to it. Now over to Owen Barker, back up top to Cash. Decides to take a three with a guy right there in his face, won't get to go. Owen Barker fighting for the rebound. Austin Wells comes down with it. He's now on the right wing. Crestview trying to work it inside. They get it to Ringler. Now to Barker, post hook on the way, and that's a barbecue chicken alert for Owen Barker down low. Grown man move right there, Storm from Owen Barker. Gets two hands on the basketball, and that deep in the post is going to be hard for St. Paul to defend. They're going to push Barker outside of the paint and then make him force tough uh, jumpers. Hip has it now over on the left wing. Gets it over to Herner. Herner trying to work it around. Almost stolen by Barker. Clear the path for takeoff. He's going upstairs. Going to be a foul, and Owen Barker is going to head to the uh, free throw stripe for two. And Garrett, that's something that he wanted to to make sure we knew is that he was going to try to throw some down tonight. Yeah, Storm, he talked to us a little bit earlier in the pregame that he, he he warned us there might be a few throwdowns here tonight against the rival, but right there, good defense getting back in transition by Caden Maxwell and forcing the foul and making him go to the charity stripe for two. 
And Garrett, you know me, you know my saying, you know, I never like it when guys fake the funk on a fresh, nasty dunk, and I don't believe that that guy at the charity stripe would ever do that. <laughs> yeah, Storm, the, he's not going to. He's going to knock down both of these free throws. He's going to stay true. So get to two points regardless if it was a dunk or an easy two free throws. And that's something you like out of your big man, someone who, when he takes the contact down low, he can go up to the stripe and make his free throws as St. Paul has the ball on offense. Kerner has it. That one's going to be blocked. On the other way, Jarek Ringler has Austin Wells out front, decides to take it himself. No foul call. Austin Wells battling for the offensive rebound. Not going to get it to go. St. Paul the other way, two on one, fast break. Ordered one too many butterfingers at the concession stands, Garrett, because Rodgers can't hold on to that one, and it's going to be out of bounds. See on the replay right here, Storm, get that out of my house. Get that cheese out of here right there, said Owen Barker, swatting that one out. As he's had a big, pivotal couple plays here in the first quarter. Got the rim protector badge on Hall of Fame, it seems, as Austin Wells has it for the Crestview Cougars. Not a guy who usually sets up their offense. They usually like to go to that guy right there, Jarek Ringler, now inside to Mason Ringler. Right move right there. Million dollar move, but the 10 cent finish. A little bit of miscommunication right there between the two tall trees, but as you mentioned, Storm, Crest, you can get it to really any other guards to let him come up and set the offense. Austin Wells, that previous possession, they like. He's Heath Cash, of course, and then Jarek Ringler coming on as a sophomore this year. They like him as well. As we take a look at the Crestview starting lineups, St. Paul on offense now. That one's going to be a foul and rewarded with two more attempts at the free throw line. And Garrett, uh, fouls this early in the game are something that's a little bit scary for Crestview. Not nearly as deep as they were last year. They really don't have a lot of bodies on the bench that they can rely on. A lot of those guys that were bench players last year on that great Crestview team, the team that really turned around this program, John Kurtz and his staff did an amazing job. But all those guys that were bench depth, they're not starting. So now they're looking to, they're looking to bigger roles, and Owen Barker is going to be the pivotal piece of this offense as well as Jared Ringler. Fisher nails his first attempt at the free throw line. Stays true, as you would say. I don't think I've ever heard that one out of you, and I like that. So I'm going to stay, steal it and use it whenever I can, as Austin Wells has the ball on offense, gets it to Heath Cash. Surprised he didn't pull that, had about a step of space. Normally likes to take that shot, won't that time as the ball gets tipped to Wells. Trying to work it inside, of course, to who else? But Owen Barker goes up with another grown man move, Garrett, and uh, just rocked that baby to sleep because Owen Barker is just too big on the inside. Just too big, too strong, and way too deep. St. Paul's got to be able to push out Owen Barker to us. He's going to have a dominant game here tonight. And Garrett, when do you think the double team is going to come? I mean, you can't just give him those free looks at the rim from one foot out. I mean, he's going to cash at home nine times out of ten. The hard thing is a team like Cressy Storm can shoot the ball so well when you dig into the post like that, try to get a steal from Owen Barker, he can kick it out, and they got all – Everyone on the floor can shoot a three ball, so they got to guard up, and it's going to be hard to double somebody. It's a beautiful pass right there from St. Paul, but Maxwell can't finish at the rim, and Ringler will push the pace. Owen Barker now has it on the free throw line. Beautiful Euro step. Oh, my goodness. A terrific move to get open space in the open floor, and that one goes for two. Barker out here dominating here in the first quarter storm. Nobody can stop him. Somebody's going to have to if St. Paul wants to stay in this game early. Barker making an early case for our MVP for tonight as Fisher has it. Fall away, Jay on the way. That one finds the bottom of the bu bucket. Little lefty shot right there. Pretty stroke. Got it to go. Rattles in. Austin Wells across half court for the Cougars. Hands it off to Jarrett Ringler. No scoring yet for him as well as Heath Cash. Trying to work it inside. They do. Another move. And I don't know how many more times St. Paul's going to let that happen before they bring the double team. No fault to Maxwell. That's just better offense. Storm, he did warn us before this game. Big rivalry game. Wanted us to know that, you know, watch him out there on the floor. And so far, I think he might have all the points for the Cougars. Pretty sure two at the free throw line and the rest coming at the floor is St. Paul with almost a turnover. And it will be a turnover. Diving on the floor. Barker's going to come up with it. That's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow points towards the home team. That'll be the Crestview Cougars. He's doing it all here early, Storm, showing off the hustle right there. It's not all about the glitz and the glamour, getting on the floor, getting dirty, getting the ball for his team. And that's what you like to see as a head coach, someone who's not afraid to lay out, lay their body on the line, go out for those loose balls, and Crestview rewarded with it with possession of the basketball. Austin Wells now over to Jarek Ringler. Back up top to Barker. Heath Cash, quick trigger on that three-pointer, not going to go. Jarek Ringler rebound back out to Cash not going to go again. Another offensive rebound for the Cougars. That is Raymer who will grab that rebound, get it into Jarek Ringler, and that starts his scoring for the night. Press is so dominant down low. Everybody playing a piece in the offensive rebounding club as Jarek Ringler gets the offensive rebound, gets the putback, and now the defense can set in storm and see if they can suffocate, and Owen Barker gets a steal. Barker now in the run out. Crestview has number. Quick crossover. Another Euro step. Takes that silky smooth finish. Wow. 
St. Paul's got to call a timeout to get their offense back on track. Rescue coming out here red hot. Look at this move right here. This is your big man storm. Out in transition with a Euro step, little hee hee, right at the rim for two. Gets it to go as Crestview's now up to a double digit lead. Wow, that touch as smooth as silk puts that one in as we take a look at our matchup spotlight. St. Paul coming in on this one, like we said, on a skid 0 and 2. Crestview Cougars, though, red hot coming into this one. Garrett, and I mean, just like I said, that rivalry, this isn't normally how things go for St. Paul. The storm Crestview starting off hot again this year, 3 0. They won their last game against Crestline, 62 to 44, showing off the dance move already, storm already. Their next opponent is going to be Western Reserve. That'll be back here at the Cougars' Den. So Crestview, a homestand here. Past couple games had Plymouth, then went out to Crestline, and now back here at the Cougar again against a Firelands Conference rival in St. Paul. Garrett, talk to me a little bit about the uh, the um, the impact John Kurtz as a head coach, only in his sophomore season, but it seems like he's been able to turn this ship completely around. Well, with John Kurtz implemented, he completely changed the culture of this basketball program. I think everybody here in the Crestview area kind of knows that now. Uh, and I, I think his main focus was we got to fix the defense. There's a lot of laziness here, and he completely changed it around. The, the defense here is just so stifling, and we're not used to seeing that from a Crestview basketball team. They've been getting it done under Coach John Kurtz and the staff, and that's one of the reasons this program has been turned around. Out of the timeout, Deppin has it on the right wing, trying to go at Jarek Ringler. He's right there with him. Big block, Jarek Ringler running down the court. Maybe going to see an alley-oop, just a pass. And a layup, no dunk right there. And Owen Barker really wanted one, but he won't take flight and he'll just get the layup. Got a little excited up here, Storm. I thought he was going to throw it down on the defender, but elected two points is two points. And now he is up to 14 of Crestview's 16. Wow, oh my goodness. Doing it all on the offensive end for the Cougars as Deppin has it, gets it off to Fisher. Fisher tries to go inside. Got a couple of bodies there with him. That's going to be tipped out of bounds. No call yet on the floor from the referee. And I believe... That is going to change possession into the hands of the Crestview Cougars. Look at the unselfish play you see on the replay, the Kissel's replay. Tremendous pass from Raymer. He had a wide open layup himself, wanted to get it back to Owen Barker and let him add to his total. Heath Cash at the inbound to the freshly checked in bait. Now over to Jarek Ringler. Quiet night for him, only two points. I'm sure that'll change. Raymer has it now, back out to Cash. Now back to Jarek Ringler. Trying to work it inside. Big shocker as they swing the ball around. Cash has it on the left wing. Barker trying to establish position inside. And Garrett, it seems like they really only want to go down low as that's a deep three-pointer from Jarek Ringler, Garrett. But that didn't seem to be their offensive plan. They really want to get this ball down low into the post. Well, how could you not? Dominating so far, Owen Barker is with 14. you got to continue to feed the beast. Nobody stopped them so far. you got to be able to get down there, St. Paul, and get some bodies on bodies. Mid-range try on the way off the back iron out. Rebound corralled by the St. Paul Flyers. Fake three-pointer there from Deppin. He swings it over to Berger. He goes inside, takes a lot of contact, and Berger is going to head to the charity stripe. Berger, one of the leaders on this St. Paul team storm. One of the leading po point scorers for the St. Paul Flyers team in the loss against Monroeville. As you look at the Crestview team spotlight, head coach John Kurtz, as I mentioned, they won their last game against Crestline on the road, 62-44, to 3-0 and off to a hot start. Kurtz has completely turned this basketball program around Storm, and it's been a lot on the defensive end, but his players are stepping up and they're realizing, you know, it's time to make this a basketball school as well as a football school. And Garrett, it's a little strange there are a lot of young guys, but they have a lot of experience. Not something you see. Normally when you're in the rebuilding, which is what Crestview should technically be in right now, there isn't a lot of experience. But, I mean, uh, but I mean, just these guys, the amount of varsity experience they have as starters, I mean, just wow. Only two seniors on the roster, so that's Mason Baith and Austin Wells as Addison Raymer cooks up a three. Not going to get it to go, but they, they've been – they were so young last year. They had a couple seniors in Evan Hamilton, obviously a big guy in the area, but – they reloaded, they retooled, and now all those guys are back, and most are juniors. So they, they're going to compete this year, but next year they're going to be a really scary basketball That team. is a scary thought, Garrett. With how good this team has started, 3-0 and early in the season, and you're telling me they can get even better. Yeah, definitely. And it all starts with the young guys. you got to continue to get, get young guys to come in and work and add bench depth. And as long as they get that depth, they're going to be a scary team come postseason play. Deppin has it, dribbles into the paint, gets caught up, tries to get it outside. Spore with the steal. That one's going to be tipped away, but not before a St. Paul foul. So Crestview will take it out of bounds. 
Garrett, this is where things get scary for Crestview. Don't have a lot of bench depth, like I mentioned earlier. Who do you think they rely on to uh, kind of run this offense and kind of do their scoring when guys like Owen Barker and Heath Cat, or excuse me, and uh, Jarek Ringler on the bench? Last game we're here, Storm, we're seeing against Plymouth. Mason Baith came in and stepped in the senior. Got a few points off the bench. He's really this bench leader on this team, but right now Heath Castle on the floor. They're looking to get it to him offensively. Baith has it, dribbles to his right, out to Cash. Corner warm-up jumper on the way. Great spin on it, not going to rim out. Ringler gets the offensive rebound. A quick drop step, gets caught up. Baith, three-point try. Not going to go. Ice cold start here for the Cougars in the first quarter. Got 10 seconds left to go. Berger has it now. St. Paul's going to hold it for the last shot. Five seconds, quick crossover. Mid-range fall away, not going to go, and that's going to do it here for the first quarter as the Crestview Cougars lead the St. Paul Flyers 16-5. Going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. paying for some big name spokesperson. Kasasa checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing. Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Welcome back to the Cougars Den. Second quarter action moments away. Storm Blunchley joined by who else besides the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, I think the story of the first half was Owen Barker cooking up enough barbecue chicken to serve the whole town of Ashland. Yeah, Storm, a dominant performance from Owen Barker in the first quarter. And he's going to look to continue that right now on the bench. Got the other big guys in and Mason Ringler, but... N nobody could stop him down low, Storm. He was just too big and too strong down low. He was getting way too deep in the paint. All he had to do was hit a drop step and easy layup. And what a play right there from Maxwell. Bouncing it off the body of Mason Ringler. Savvy veteran play from Maxwell. Never want to go back to the uh, inbounder because that'll happen. You'll end up on someone's highlight reel eventually as Spohr has it for the Cougars. Gets it over to Baith. He surveys the court. Now it looks like they're trying to work it inside to Ringler. Raymer dribbles inside, floater on the way, too strong off the iron and out. That's going to be off of the St. Paul Flyers, and Chris Hughes going to retain possession. St. Paul now cut this in to single digit storm. As we mentioned, the bench depth for the Cougars, that's when they begin to struggle, and now St. Paul cutting into this lead as Mason Baith cues up a three and knocks it down. They live and die by these threes, and now you don't want to let them get hot. Weren't falling in the first quarter. That one falls first attempt in the second quarter. Fisher has it, tries to hand it off to beautiful hop step move right there. Sorry, interrupted me with that gorgeous move and an easy <laughs> layup there for the Flyers. A lot of the crowd wanted to travel, but it was a tremendous move right there with the hop step. Got the ooze in the eyes from the crowd as St. Paul gets a turnover on the other end. Herner now going the other way. Spore tried to get the chase down block. Is it going to get it? Is going to get a foul, and that's going to be two at the free throw line for the Flyers. Yeah, just a little too much on that. Can't swipe down on the basketball, Garrett. Something we uh, preach a lot out here. You never want to swipe down. But when you're in a run out like that, not a lot you can do about it. Yeah, it's hard to play that storm. Always just want to send him to the charity stripe. As this one rolls out, was halfway down, but came out. Shout out to, obviously, Coach Goon Storm. we got to always mention him on the broadcast. Never got to swipe down. Always swipe up. You avoid the foul call. And it, it lets the refs not call it. As often, at least. Hey, man, he's where I learned pretty much everything I know about basketball from. He's the reason why I fell in love with the game. Got to at least pay it forward to him in some way as Crestview with a big group substitution. Most of the starters back out there on the floor for them. Austin Wells now once again across the half-court line. Over to Jarek Ringler. Only has two tonight. Tries to get inside. Acrobatic move out to Raymer. Drives inside. Heard the slap up here. Not going to get the foul, Garrett. Not really sure 
what the ref saw or didn't see, but no foul on that one. Well, Stormy swiped down and he didn't get the call, so maybe our, uh, maybe our, our methods theory? are wrong Ooh. now. I don't know. G's coaching tip, if you swipe down, a foul will be found, so. I, <laughs> that, that's nothing but truth, I, I, I think so, at least. G, but, but it, yeah. We well, just got proven point, wrong. We just so. got proven wrong. <laughs> St. Paul with mid-range try, won't get it to go. Maxwell, two attempts, won't get either of them to fall. Three-point try on the way for St. Paul. Off the back iron out, Maxwell, another offensive rebound, and Barker finally ends up with it and gets a foul for his troubles. St. Paul couldn't buy a bucket on that off offensive possession. Four offensive rebounds, it didn't matter. Crestview was able to close out on the shooters, force bad shots, and they get the ball back. Four attempts. Don't see that very often. Don't usually get that many, but I think it's even more rare to come up with no points as Austin Wells has the ball for the Cougars. Trying to work it inside to who else but uh, Owen Barker. Jarek Ringler, step back, swings it back around. Wells has it. Dribbles to his left. Jarek Ringler, three on the way. In and out. Three-point line has not been friendly here for these Crestview Cougars. Heads up play right oh there. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, what a pass. Terrific court awareness from Owen Barker, an overhead pass. Oh, my goodness, I cannot wait to watch that one on replay. What a tremendous play right there from Barker. Got the rebound, got the steal, and with a beautiful behind that pass. And right there we see another beautiful pass right there, Storm, down to Maxwell as he gets it to go for two. Owen Barker coming back next year is going to be a problem for every team they face, Garrett. This might be the best Crestview program this, this, this school has seen in a while. This team is loaded with talent. They just got to continue to do what they're doing. One of the harps on this defense is with those steals, cause a lot of fouls, but St. Paul will head in the charity stripe to see if they can hit two and cut into this deficit. So Murray, no, never want to be at when you're a team ahead. You never want to send the opposing team to the free throw line. Stops the clock, gives them some freebies at the line. I feel like sending a, you know, a team to the free throw line at all, pretty bad, but especially when you have a big lead. Especially because they get to stop the clock. They get a chance to nibble into that score a little bit, Storm, that deficit, to see if they can get a chance to come back into the game. Jarek Ringlet now for the Crestview Cougars offense. Dribbles to his left. Hop step gets it out to Raymer. Three-point try on the way from Wells. Another miss from the three-point arc. Hasn't hurt them too much, Garrett, but ice cold. Only making one, I believe, on the night. As we mentioned in the broadcast prior storm, they live and die by these three-point shots. They're going to continue to shoot them. We've seen last game against Plymouth, Heath Cash struggled out of the gate a little bit, continued to shoot a shot, and finally found it. So I'm not expecting them to stop anytime soon as Maxwell comes up just a bit short on the jumper. Wells has it now to Barker. Clear the path for takeoff. Not going to get the dunk, but gets the layup to go in transition. Other way, St. Paul trying to work it into the corner. That one's going to be tipped away by Jarek Ringler. Out of bounds, and Heath Cash is going to check back in for Raymer. Man, Garrett, once this team can consistently get their threes to fall, I mean... I know I keep gushing and raving about it, but th I mean, this is this this squad out here is special. It's going to be a tough team to stop, but St. Paul looking to do so. They've cut into the deficit a couple times, so they're doing their job. They just got to get better and get back on defense. Owen Barker's having too many looks at the rim and way too many, too many easy layups. Let's take a look at that amazing pass we got. Look at the court awareness. Knows right where his guy is. Oh, my goodness. Puts it right where it needs to be. Mamma mia. That's a one spicy meatball. Oh, wow. What a beautiful call. <laughs> that was a storm, but tremendous pass from Barker. Don't want to take away from that. And what a play and what a finish from Raymer. Ringler has it left wing. St. Paul in a 2-3 zone now. I believe they were playing man just a moment ago. So saw something they didn't like trying to keep Owen Barker out of this game, and another very clear foul that didn't get called as Barker has it on the post. Two bodies coming. Tried to get a little too fancy on that one, Garrett, but uh, that one out of bounds. Took his eyes away from the, his teammate Storm. Decided to go with a little bit more of a flashy pass again. This time didn't work to his advantage. Going to end up being a turnover, but this 2-3 zone is going to force Crestview to shoot some threes. So St. Paul and company electing 
to make Crestview live or die by it. And so far, they've been ice cold. It might work to their advantage. Yeah, 2-3 uh, zone, the perfect way to stop Owen Barker. You know, him running that short corner, not nearly as effective as him being in the post. Make him shoot from 12, 14 feet out. As there's a steal, Jarek Ringler not able to come up with. St. Paul is going to get in a wide open layup out of that scuffle. And Hip able to find the two points for the Flyers. A lot of the flash has been with Cressy here in the first half, but St. Paul is still in this ballgame, only down eight points. Here we go, taking a look more at my coaching tip, Storm. Take the eyes, take your eyes off the prize, you'll be your own demise. And right there, Owen Barker, Storm, took his eyes off the prize. Teammate was in no man's land. Ball went out of bounds for a turnover, so the flash is cool. But I think John Kirsch just wants the easy pass there. Got to get the fundamentals down as Austin Wells takes it out of bounds. St. Paul maybe figured out this Crestview offense, a 2-3 zone, not really confident in their three-point shooting and keeping Owen Barker out of the paint. And that's really been the driving factor for the Crestview offense. They've been forcing it to Owen Barker, and he's been dominating. As beautiful pass from Ringler, but Wells smokes the layup, and St. Paul survives there on that offensive possession. Fisher now with an opportunity to chip even further away at this Crestview lead. Over now to Hip on the left wing, back to Fisher. Now in the corner, dribbling inside, floater on the way. Get that cheese out of here. Owen Barker now on the fast break. 2-1-3 fast break, decides to slow it down, back out to Austin Wells. Cash right wing, quick trigger. That one finds the bottom of the net, and Garrett, when he swishes one and gets going, that's when things get scary. Heath Cash, also known as Mr. Splashman, knocking it down right there from way downtown. Don't let him get hot. Don't let this Cougars team get hot from downtown because they'll make you pay. Hey, you know what they say, uh, Mr. Splash, man, I make it splash, man. And just how fast he can pull that trigger. All he needs is an inch of room, and he will let that baby fly from way downtown. He's been a driving factor showing why this Crestview team has been so good here in the past two years. If you're going to have a shooter like that, he's going to continue shooting too. We've seen in the first quarter, he missed a couple. I think, I believe, three. he missed three of them. And now he's shooting one, knocking one down, but... Scary foul right there as Jarek Ringler went over the top. And Heath Cash, you know, not afraid to get inside and, and go down low and hang with those tall trees down in the middle. Uh, just every so often enough to keep the defenders honest. But, you know, that, that means a lot when you got a small point guard who, who's willing to take that contact. St. Paul now down low in the post. Not going to get much down. Done down there with the uh, tall trees of Crestview as Austin Wells gets the clear out pass. Three-pointer on the way, same spot for Heath Cash, and he is red hot from behind the three-point line. Here we go, Storm, back-to-back. Three-point shots, you gotta close out him. You can't, you gotta be mindful of where Heath Cash is at, because he'll shoot wherever he gets it. And right there, beautiful pass, not gonna get it to go, is Owen Barker with another block, snatches it out of the air, Storm, and Crestview is gonna run a transition. Jarek Ringler has it now, back out to Cash. No three-point try that time, pull up mid-range, Jay, heat check, oh my goodness, Heath Cash unconscious. Here we go, Storm. 8-0 run from Heath Cash himself. Owen Blocker with the, bar, with the block on the other end, excuse me. And then gets it to go, Heath Cash, the beautiful step back Jimmy. Owen Blocker, that name, that name actually suits him pretty well as he's on defense right now. Cash with a quick finger. Barker takes it away, one on one. Run out, go up strong. No and one, but is going to get rewarded with two fouls at the free throw line. Garrett, I am, I'm just waiting for it. And that was a scary fall. Glad to see uh, Owen Barker get up and walk away. I think the dunk is going to definitely happen tonight, Storm. Owen Barker has been looking for it on every opportunity that he gets. But St. Paul has played it well, forced him to go to the free throw line and knock down the free throws. But tonight, he's done so. Uh, Jarek Ringler knocks down, or excuse me, Owen Barker knocks down his first one as Spore checks in for Jarek Ringler. And Garrett, uh, you know, it's not, I don't even know if it's about if or when. It's more about if he'll fake the funk on it. Speechless storm after those <laughs> curious, curious words. But the story tonight, Storm, hasn't been the commentary. It's been the play of Heath Cash and Owen Barker down low. Heath Cash, 8-0 run by himself here in the past couple minutes, and it's been him getting it done at the three-point line, knocking down back-to-back -back threes, and then had the mid-range jumper. Owen Barker then got the block here. So far, it's been the Barker and Cash show. Definitely, and you know that's kind of what it usually is. I know the other night versus Plymouth, we saw, we saw Jarek Ringler kind of take over, but that's what's so special about the Cougars. They don't just rely on one guy. Any guy on any given night can come out and give you a run for your money. One of my pregame notes was don't play hero ball. 
the, they, they don't play isolation ball here, Bass, or here at Crestview, excuse me. They swing it around. All five guys can score really at all three levels of the basketball floor, and they've been getting it done here tonight and really all season. If they want to go deep in postseason, they got to continue to do so. Off the ball foul for the Crestview Cougars. So St. Paul is going to be at the line for a 1-1. One and 1-10 one. One left to play here in the second quarter. That is going to be hip at the free throw line. Puts that one up, not going to get it to go. And those are the ones that you need to hit as Ringler clears the ball out to Heath Cash. Heath Cash right on the dime to Spore. He goes up and puts it high off the glass and in. Heath Cash with the assist. Nice pass from Cash down there to Spore. Bobbled the ball a little bit. Nonetheless, finished on the other side of the rim with the left hand. And that's going to be a travel storm. Tremendous defense from Spore in this Crestview offense. is right here, Cash on a line, looking like QB1. Left hand from Spore. Wow, frozen on a frozen rope. Incredible. As Austin Wells once again for the Crestview Cougars has it on offense. Hand off to Spore. Dribbles inside. Who else but Cash? Not an ankle breaker, but will be two points right here for Heath Cash. Tremendous move from Cash. Dropping the defender. Not sure if he tripped or what. Didn't matter. Got around him. Hit the mid-range jumper. Fisher, last possession, had a turnover. Now has Spore right there on him. Dribbles to his left, try to rifle that one in. And Garrett, this is not how you stop the bleeding if you're St. Paul. Now down 22 points. It's going to be an uphill battle. St. Paul's got to chip away here, but only with 23 seconds. I believe Cressy's going to hold the ball for him on this last possession and take the last shot of the quarter. Ringler checks out as Baith will check in. Spore will also check out. Jerick Ringler in for him. And Garrett. Well, who do you even go to in this scenario at the end of the at the end of the quarter, at the end of the half, at the end of the game? So many guys can score on this team. I mean, it's kind of hard to pick. I think it's just who has the hot hand, and right now Heath Cash does, and I think they're setting up a down screen for him right here. We'll see what happens. Elevator play, looking to get it to Cash. Now over to Jarek Ringler. Five seconds left to go. Jarek Ringler dribbles outside. Owen Barker, Baith on the wing. Gets inside, floater alert. That one goes at the end of the halftime buzzer. That's going to do it for the first Half of action, the Crestview Cougars lead the St. Paul Flyers 39 to 15. Gonna take a quick break. We're gonna be right back with some halftime stats as well as second half action. But for now, you have been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Here we go now. Here we go now. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel.
It's halftime here at the Cougars Den where the Crestview Cougars lead the St. Paul Flyers 39 to 15. Got some halftime stats here for you guys. Let's take a look at those. And as we see the graphic come up, we'll start with the Crestview Cougars. 13 field goals, three threes, 13 rebounds, seven fouls, three turnovers, shooting four of five from the free throw stripe for St. Paul. Seven field goals, zero threes, 10 rebounds, seven fouls, six turnovers, and shooting three of five from the free throw stripe. Storm Blunchley, as always, joined by the one, the only, the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, give me your first half takeaways. Well, Storm was a dominating performance from Crestu, and especially Owen Barker in the first quarter. I believe he had 16 of the, the first 18 points for the Cougars, and then Late in the second quarter, it was really the cash show. Heath Cash started splashing some threes. I believe he knocked down two of them. Then he had a few mid-range jumpers. So once Crestview starts knocking down those threes, it's going to be a long night if you can't stop them. For real. And uh, just when they have so many guys on the floor, I know I keep talking about it, they, anyone can beat you on any given night. And we saw that as Owen Barker took over the first quarter, then Heath Cash in the second quarter, like you said. That has got to be so frustrating if you're St. Paul. I mean, I mean, how can you even draw up a play to stop all five guys? Last time we've seen Crestview, Jarek Rinlier was the leading scorer, Storm, but not here tonight. I believe he only has two or four points. So he's been struggling, and, and he hasn't really had to take a shot because it's been Heath Cash and Owen Barker. It's hard for St. Paul's head coach to draw something up to be able to beat five guys. It's been a struggle all night long, and Owen Barker has just been a menace down low. All right, let me give you some hypotheticals here, Garrett. What do you think happens first? You think we see pretty much a Heath Cash four steps behind the three-point three, uh, three point arc, Three, or you think we see an Owen Barker dunk first? What do you think we're seeing? I mean, we're seeing one of them, probably both. So, what do you think is first? I could see, I could see either going. I mean, it's hard because Crestview has been out defensively suffocating St. Paul's offense and forcing six turnovers. So, I could see them get a run out. And Owen Barker, every time he's been in transition, he has been looking for a dunk. And I know he, it's a he hard one. He up too, it's so a hard it's, one. it's a hard choice to make, but I think I'm going to go with Owen Barker. Maybe a two two hand slam. You're going with the two hand slam. I'm yeah. going for Heath Cash. He found his rhythm there at the end of the at the end of the first. I'm, I'm I'm betting it'll be from around the Cougar head on the floor. I bet that's where we'll see him shoot from. Let me ask you this, Storm. Though, obviously, Shooter gets hot in the second quarter, but then he heads into the halftime break. Is is he going to get a little ice cold? Maybe. I think it depends on the shooter. I think a guy like Heath Heat Cash, he's got that heat retention badge on Hall of Fame, <laughs> something like that. So I think he retains a lot of that heat. And and you know no matter if he's cold, if he's hot, if he's lukewarm, he's mild, he's shooting. It's going up. I mean, and with how fast he can get the basketball out of his hands, it, it's going up. And, and that's why I picked the Heath Cash through. Well, Storm, the Cougars are keeping it loose. Already out of the halftime break, they came out with about five minutes left, getting some jumpers up, so he might already be warm by the time the second half begins. Now, maybe John Kurtz might put me in or something, give me give me a, a chance with that lefty sky hook. You know, that, that move used to be deadly. There weren't a lot of guys back in my day back in my day who could stop that. Yeah, Storm, your freshman basketball career was completely <laughs> insane. <laughs> Nothing like these kids can imagine. Well, can we bring up the GoPro, Adam? I, I got something I got to show the fans. This sky hook right here, I'd get you down in the post. I'd give you one dribble, two dribble. I'd be right as, you know, I'm a big body, so I'd be right where I need to be in the lane. And I'd go with the sky hook, bring the bring the oppo, lane, bring the oppo leg up and go all the and way and hook it in. It. And that was <laughs> unstoppable. You can ask anyone from my class. But I think unless you have a, an, an amazing story you'd like to tell, I think we, we're going to take a break. I mean, I have a few stories. But let's take a break. Let's, let's take, take a break. break. Let's right, take well, a break. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned because on the other side of this break, we're going to have a wonderful story from Garrett. But for now, you've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
Welcome back to the Cougars Den. Storm Bluntsley joined, as always, by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, I think we were promised a story. Well, Storm, I guess if I have to go there, uh, freshman year basketball, obviously you were on the team, if you remember this one. We were uh, playing New London. It was here. It was at the Cougars Den. And uh, first half was coming to an end. I remember Jake Greer was <laughs> dribbling the ball <laughs> off the court. And uh, I went to the... I went to the sideline, and I was yelling, no, Jake, 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 give me the ball. Jake passed me the ball, and I uh, hit that corner buzzer beater three. I don't know if you do I remember do that. remember that. that I do remember that. That was my greatest high school accomplishment in my life. And the best part is is we probably still lost that game, we which did. is the best part. <laughs> I think that was playoffs, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably our last game, uh, you know, as Crestview Cougars basketball players. But, Garrett, let's talk about some good Crestview basketball players. The guys out here on the court, I mean, wow, just what a first half versus a big conference rival and just rival in general. Just a tremendous performance here from Crestview on all facets of the game, too, getting it done defensively, forcing a couple St. Paul turnovers, and then getting transition. And they're such a good passing team, too. They share the wealth around, and they're, they're not selfish. They look for each other, and tonight they've been looking for Owen Barker, so he's getting it done. Heath Cash wants it there at the logo, not going to get it. Jarek Ringler up. That's going to be a travel before the shot, and Jarek Ringler not really able to find his shot tonight. Struggling so far, but he hasn't had to do much. He's been able to get it off to Owen Barker and Heath Cash, who has done really the, the boatload of the scoring for his team. Fisher has it now out of the halftime break over to Maxwell. Now top of the key is hip. He swings it over to Fisher, trying to work it inside to Maxwell. Got the mismatch on him. Not a mismatch for Jarek Ringler as he gets the block. Uh, excuse me, Austin Wells. In the run out, not going to take the three. A corner jumper on the way for Ringler, not going to go. Rebound corralled by the Flyers. St. Paul's got to begin to cut into this lead storm. If they want any shot, obviously still early in the third quarter, but 24-point deficit. they got to get going in a hurry. And what a wow. challenge move right there, Storm. Oh, my goodness. The up and under. I believe that one's worthy of a little hee-hee <laughs> on that one. I mean, wow. What a tremendous move right there, Storm, using the window. What a crossover right there down the wells. Gets the man in the air, gets it to go for two, and so far it's been a highlight reel, Storm, all night long. Yeah, oh, my goodness, just highlight after highlight as Fisher has it for St. Paul. Oh, my goodness, that layup on the other end. Backdoor cut, fake, not going to get a defender to bite, goes up for it. Oh, and that one hurts if you're Owen Barker. There was just a little too much lean. Uh, on his defense, and that was, I believe, an easy call for the referee. Hard to be a defender now, but look oh, at this move wow. right here, Storm, splitting the defenders. Deep in his bag like the fries are at the bottom. Garrett, mama mia, that's a spicy meatball. The whole nine yards, give him everything we got because that's the best play I've seen tonight. No jam on that finish, Storm. All jelly right there off the top oh. of the window, getting it to go, rolling off the rim. It's all food here at Crestview's. They're dominating St. Paul. Of course it is, and it's got to be grape jelly because uh, strawberry <laughs> preserves is not that good. Austin Wells lot. the other way for the Cougars. <laughs> Dribbles to his left, gets inside the lane, gets trapped to St. Paul Flyers right there. Wells dives for it, looking to get out of his hands, and he gets it to Heath Cash. Almost a turnover, and it's going to be a St. Paul run out. Jarek Ringler right there, trailing the whole way. That one's going to be a finish from Herner. 4-0 run here for the Flyers here early in the second quarter. Just what they needed here to start the second half. Ringler has it now up top to Jarek Ringler. Back to Ringler trying to work it inside to Barker. He's got it down low. Wells, three-point jumper wide open. Off the rim and out. But look at the rebound from Barker. Still battling for it and geared every possession. Owen Barker down there trying to swallow up the glass. It's tremendous effort from Barker, but he missed an easy bunny at the rim. Rushed it a little bit. Fought for the rebound, couldn't get it to go. And St. Paul now looking to cut it beneath 20 points. Offense now for St. Paul across half court. Looks like they got to play for a three-point try on the way. Not going to get it to fall. Two Cougars right there. Fisher, three-point try, wide open. Iron out big, rebound from Maxwell. A host of Cougars down there, and one of them's going to foul him and send Maxwell to the line for two free throws. Tremendous vertical right there from Maxwell. Going up and getting the rebound. Skying over the two towers down there, down low. Get the rebound, heading the charity stripe for two to see if he can cut into this lead. Maxwell with his first attempt at the free throw stripe. That one goes, one for one now. Still has one more attempt. Yeah. 
Maxwell able to get the shooter's touch on that free throw and goes a perfect two for two. Austin Wells setting up the offense has been doing a lot of that for the Cougars tonight. Hands it off to Jarek Ringler. Takes a screen from Heath Cash. Cash open in the corner. Not going to find him. Jarek Ringler trying to reset the offense. Over to Wells. Back up top to Cash. He drives inside. Hands it off to Barker. Now Crestview moving the rock around a lot. Playing some team-oriented basketball here as Austin Wells resets things at half court. Five minutes left to go here in the second. Jarek Ringler, three-point try. No good. Battle for the rebound. That one's going to be off of Maxwell, and it's going to stay in the possession of the Crestview Cougars. Well, the defense has changed here from St. Paul. They're playing a lot better here in the second half. Pushing Owen Barker out of the paint, and Maxwell's done a good job here in the second half of boxing him, boxing him out almost at the rebound right there. But Barker was able to knock it away, but St. Paul's defense is looking a little bit better and gets the block right there from Maxwell, and St. Paul saves the ball out of bounds. Wow, Maxwell out of nowhere. Two on one, fast break here for the Flyers. Let's see if they take advantage and put him in the spin cycle. Oh my goodness, what a play from the Flyers, and the Cougars have to take a timeout. Looking like a teacup at the Carnival Storm, spinning like a ballerina, gets to go over the defender in a beautiful finish, but here's that block from Maxwell. He's got an insane vertical jumped up to tip that ball away. Out of nowhere, and uh, a lot of props for that finish once again by the Flyers. I mean, the perfect move, creating the space and getting the easy layup to go. And Garrett, I know it's still a big deficit, but maybe a little bit of a, mom of a momentum shift here. Yeah, obviously down still a ton of buckets, but now clawing back into it, and they've got it done on the, the defensive end. Crestview has been scoreless here out of the first few minutes of the third quarter. Let's see what St. Paul can do on the offensive end. they got to continue to get some steals and get some fast break opportunities offensively. 16 points. Uh, deficit here for the Flyers as out of the timeout, Crestview will have possession. Who else but Wells bringing it up? Barker now on the three-point line. Maxwell right there on him. Cash thought about the three-pointer, dribbles inside, hands it off to Jarek Ringler. Back outside to Cash. Really needed him to cash on that three-pointer right there. Jarek Ringler over to Cash. Trying to work it inside. It's going to be a foul. And Owen Barker Storm is working down low. I watched him that whole off in possession. He didn't stop until he touched the rock. They were looking for him down low as St. Paul has been doing a good job here in the second half. Cade Maxwell, that is, is being physical with Barker and forcing him out of the paint. And when you got to guard a guy like that who's always active, who's always moving off the ball, Garrett, that's got to be frustrating. It's hard to guard as Cash lines up a three, and it's nothing but net storm. This guy, that was a three feet behind the three point line. What did I tell too. you, man? I, I calls him like I sees him as Heath Cash cashes home another triple. Fisher now hands it off, dribbles inside St. Paul. Not going to go Maxwell. Another two offensive rebounds, and Garrett on the defensive glass. Crest, you getting a little lackadaisical. So far in the second half, St. Paul's been bringing the pain. They've been being a little bit more physical than the Cougars, and they've shown on the scoreboard they're beginning to cut in this lead. Crestview on offense. Jarek Ringler has it. Over to Raymer. Swing it all the way over to Austin Wells. Wells trying to work it inside. He gets it there. Another post hook, and that was the bread and butter there in the first half for the Cougars, able to get back into that post scoring column. And that's what they need right there. And St. Paul's going to push the pace to the other end. Going to call a foul on Jarek Ringler. Going to go to the line and shoot two. Here's that replay storm with that beautiful move from Ringler. Just a little power dribble goes over the defender. It's hard to guard someone with that kind of height. Nothing you can do about that. I mean, that's just too easy for him. But, I mean, honestly, there's not a whole lot you can do as St. Paul unable to knock down their first attempt at the free throw line. Spore checks in for Jarek Ringler. And Garrett, the, the bench has been playing a lot better here for Crestview than, than they did in their opener at home against Plymouth. Been a struggle here, Crestview, bench-wise on the offensive end. But so far here tonight against the Flyers here at home, they've settled down a little bit from the opening games. They got it to their playmakers. It looks like Coach Kurtz elects to keep one of the starters on the floor with them, some of the bench players, Barker and Cash, are out there right now. Spore has it now. Deep three-point range now to Raymer. Over to Cash. Now inside, quick dribble, power dribble, count that baby, and the bucket old-fashioned three-point play for Owen Barker. It's just too easy, Storm. Rocking the baby asleep. What a beautiful move 
from Barker, using his strength to his advantage. Raymer and Cash looking for him constantly. Just one power dribble, gets the contact. Just too easy, floats right over top of the floater. Barker now at the line trying to convert his and one play. That he will do, and Garrett, that, I mean, that's just unfair, man. That's like when you go in 2K and you make Giannis seven foot three. I mean, you just you just can't stop it. it, it it's just cheese. Especially with the kind of strength Barker has. One of the dominant forces in this area. Gets down low. He's almost impossible to stop if he's got at least one foot in the, in the painted area. And with his court vision, if you bring the, the, the double team, you can bet your bottom dollar that Barker's going to find the open man. We've seen it a couple times tonight. We've seen it against Plymouth, too. He is looking for teammates as soon as he gets in the post and gets doubled. He's found a few of them here tonight. Fisher has it over in the corner. St. Paul driving inside. Now floater alert high. Arcing shot, not going to go. Battle for the rebound. Going to end up in the hands of St. Paul. Dish down inside to Maxwell. Little too much on it. Going to be out of bounds. Two minutes and 33 seconds left to go on your Sutton Bank scoreboard. I like it when they sponsor the scoreboard. Gives you that alliteration. Rolls off the tongue perfectly as Crestview has it on offense. Spore able to keep his footing. Goes inside. Not enough on that one as it falls out of the cup. Welcome to tightrope right there. Spore was, but couldn't get it to go. Smoked the bunny at the rim. See what St. Paul here can do offensively. Fisher has it. Tried to lob it inside there to Maxwell. He gets it, gets the defender in the air, and gets rewarded with a foul. Maxwell's going to have another couple of opportunities at the free throw line. Raymer really no need to go up there and try to swat that one away. Barker was there. Should I get your hands up? Don't swipe down. Don't want to do that, and that he did right there. Stripe's going to call that 10 times out of 10. Yes, indeed they are as Maxwell up to the free throw line. That one's not going to fall off the front of the iron. Ringler checking in, and Barker's going to sit down. And Garrett, a lot of these Crestview players, they're, they're making it tough for us to choose who the MVP is going to be tonight. As Storm, I, as soon as I think it's going to be Owen Barker, Heath Cash comes along, and then St. Paul will go on a run. So I don't know if St. Paul will come back and, you know, jab Crestview here tonight at the Cougars then. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see until our postgame show. Austin, or excuse me, that is Bate that has it at the top of the key. Two minutes left to play here in the third. Bates still keeping his dribble alive. Now inside to Ringler. Raymer, three-point try in the corner. Won't fall. Maxwell now on a run out. Three on three. Going to call that one a travel violation, not, or, excuse me, a turnover for the Flyers. Don't want to do that. Don't want to beat yourself up. Now down 20 points. Here late in the, and here, here, excuse me, in the late stages of the third quarter. You got to stop those and convert on those easy opportunities, especially when you get a free look at the rim down double digits. Fisher will sit down for the Flyers. As he Cash going to bring it up, and excuse me, it's actually going to be Baith. Now over in the corner as well is back to Baith. Another three point here for the Cougars. That one won't fall as well. Two on two, fast break. Herner tries to take it all the way himself. Isn't going to get it to fall. It's going to be out of bounds. Last touch by the Cougars. Berger set to inbound. This one for the Flyers. Heath Cash able to get a fingertip on it, and that's going to be a steal. Baith now in the run out. That's going to be another turnover for the Cougars as well. Beautiful move there from St. Paul, but a 10-cent finish as that one's not going to go Baith the other way, looking ahead, decides to slow it down almost. A double dribble. Is it going to get the call outside? Wells, three-point try. Garrett, it's been rough here for the Cougars in the second half, unless your name's Heath Cash from the three-point line. They struggled all night long, and other than Barker and Cash, it's really been a struggle offensively for the Cougars. But those two, they've been able to lean on them, get them the ball offensively, and beats up at St. Paul. Got to stop the turnovers if they want a chance to come back and win this game. Cash takes a seat on the bench. Jarek Ringler steps in. Berger has it now. Three-point try on the way. That one's not going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Crestview basketball. Wells set to inbound. He gets it to Jarek Ringler, who's had a relatively quiet night tonight for the Cougars. Now to Raymer, all the way over to Ringler. 
Beautiful spin move in. The post hook halfway down won't go. Jarek Ringler has got his back on the offensive glass. Right there to clean up the mess. Jarek Ringler, right place, right time. Easy look at the rim. Gets the offensive rebound in the pullback. St. Paul the other way. In the corner now is Fair. Hands it off to Deppen. Deppen all the way to his right. Back to Berger. Berger getting caught in the paint. Backdoor cut. Able to be corralled by the Flyers and St. Paul. They're going to call no shot. That's going to be out of bounds for the Flyers. Got to go to your best inbounds play here. Need a point. Need a bucket. 13 seconds left here in the third quarter. Let's see what they can do. It's got to be stack. That, I mean, that's everyone's best inbound play. Or elevator. Play. Or elevator. None of that for the Flyers, though. They don't, they don't mess around with our playbooks, I guess, as Deppin has it. Hands it off to hip. Probably a good thing they don't, Storm. Not, not going to lie, probably they do, because <laughs> the only play we'd run it, we'd, run, we'd be running stack in a half court. Final shot here for the Flyers. Not going to get it off, and that's going to send us into the fourth quarter. Make sure you stick around, because we're going to be right back with some fourth quarter action. But for now, you've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the Owens Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Welcome back to the Cougars Den where we have fourth quarter action underway. Storm Bluntley, as always, joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, it was kind of a routine third quarter. What were your takeaways? Cressy settled in after a St. Paul run early in the third quarter. Let's see if Raylor can knock it down. He cannot. But St. Paul got a little bit more physical, but then in the fourth quarter, the Cougars offense began to wear and tear offensively and surprise no foul call right there storm they're letting <laughs> play down low as maxwell and barker get into it maybe the refs want to get home and watch the vikings game just like you i don't know maybe they're big vikings fans and uh, they probably used to heartbreak then <laughs> <laughs> oh rough fall there from owen barker not happy about that one he's going to get up and walk it off he's had a couple of those scary falls so glad to see him okay Jarek Ringler set the inbound, gets it to Wells. Now outside to Cash, he dribbles inside of the lane. Beautiful pass, hands it off to Barker, and he finishes it for two. Tremendous move from Barker down low. Crestview's offense beginning to set in here in the fourth quarter. Just got to continue to do what they're doing, and they should be able to walk out here with a Firelands Conference win and, and still remain undefeated. St. Paul Fisher now trying to drive inside, finishes with a lot of contact. Silky smooth layup as Crestview's trying to answer now. Cash a quick crossover, somehow threads that needle over to Austin Wells. Austin Wells gets in the painted area to the other Wells. Three-point try, not going to go, and Garrett. I mean, wow, it is kind of impressive how big of a lead Crestview has despite their poor performance from behind the arc. They've struggled offensively here in the second half. It's really been... Their defense that has suffocated St. Paul in the third quarter because if St. Paul was able to hit some of these shots, this could be a closer game because Crestview really has been struggling here. Wells has it now on the right wing, trying to work it inside to who else but Barker. And John Kurtz is going to decide to talk it over with his guys. Didn't see something he liked with the Crestview offense. And, you know, besides the three-point shooting like we've been talking about, Garrett, 
Oh, excuse me. Hello. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. But besides the you know three point shooting, there's not a lot you can't like if you're John Kurtz. Well, especially defensively, holding a St. Paul team to 31 points here in the early going to the fourth quarter. They hold on here. It's going to be a big win, and they're going to stay undefeated and sit at 4-0 and 2-0 and in the Firelands Conference. These early Firelands Conference matchups, as I alluded to, Storm and uh, Plymouth game, they're going to be very pivotal because most, typically most of these teams by, at the end of the season, they're not going to be the same team. A lot of starters are going to be changed in and out. The lineups will be completely different. You've got to factor in injuries. So a lot of things could be different, you know, in February, January. So... These early Finals Conference wins are going to be huge going to the tournament play. And later in tournament play, that's when you want to be playing your best basketball. That's when you want to be playing at all, on all cylinders. And it seems like Crestview already hitting their stride. So far, they've been doing a great job defensively, too, interrupting the passing lanes. But St. Paul, they want any shot and going. Thought that was going to be a block, Storm. Didn't want to interrupt myself, but what did he do, Storm? Let me ask you, what did he do? Here to get the foul call, the, the errant the foul call. Do I even have to say it? Do I do I really have to even say it, Garrett? I think we all knew what he did. He swiped down. It, that's too easy of a call. Even I can make that call. Call. St. <laughs> Paul not going to get rewarded with a point. Still has another attempt at the free throw line. As Stewart will check in for Wells. And Garrett, time dwindling down for... Owen Barker to get his fresh, nasty dunk. I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, Storm, here we go. Fast break opportunity. He's looking for it. He wants it. Look at him. He wants the basketball. And three guys swarm to him, so not going to get it on this possession unless he pulls off something crazy. Jarek Ringler inside, a little too much on it. Not going to get it to go. Trying to work it outside to Wells. Tess sides to take it himself, and that's going to be another two-pointer for the Crestview Cougars. Cougars continue, continue to pull, pour it on, and that's going to be a St. Paul turnover. They've been racking them up here. In the second half, now up to 10. Not the winning formula you want, especially on the road. Maybe not, you know, some might say not the winning recipe. Not the recipe for success with G-Man Garrett Parlett. Wells the other way for the Cougars. Barker has it now, wiggling his way inside and puts just enough on it to get it over the rim and put it away. Let me ask you, Storm, has Barker missed at the rim? Maybe one. I think he missed one in the third quarter. Off of an offensive rebound one time, but other than that, I believe he's been almost perfect. And from the free throw line, as the bank is open this late, First National Bank of Olivesburg, that one falls for two. Wells on the other end. Jarek Ringler now dribbles inside. Met with a lot of contact and is going to be hit with a foul. So Cressy is going to have a chance to run the stack play, Garrett. See if they go to it, Storm. I don't know why you would, considering we could never execute a stack play in our whole entire tenure of uh, high school basketball. We were just a, a, a different breed. We were uh, we were good kids. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, Jarek Ringler has it for the Cougars. Fisher right there on him. Gets it over to Raymer. Now back up top to Jarek Ringler. He takes it himself, almost gets it tipped away. Fall away shot, one-legged. Not going to get it. Stewart with the easy finish off the offensive rebound. Haven't seen Noah Stewart here tonight at all. Checks in the game storm, and what's he do? He gets an offensive rebound and gets a putback. He is going to be another big man that's going to factor in to this point later this season. He oh, my won. goodness. Wow. wow. Almost put that one through the wall. Look at the perfect rotation here from Stewart to get over the screen and meet his man at the rim. Get that mess out of my house. I believe that's the third time that Crestview has interrupted me while I'm talking. They just want to create a highlight reel here, Storm, and that's what they're doing. They've had multiple plays, and Stewart went for it again. Not going to get it to go, and St. Paul is going to have a turnover. It's going to be Crestview ball. Now you don't know. Maybe they just don't like you talking on their games, Garrett. I don't know. It could be anything. It's a nice sweater, Storm, that you are wearing. Thanks, it's only my second time this week wearing it. Austin Wells across the half-court line for Crestview. Gets it to Jarek Ringler on the right wing. Trying to float that one into Stewart, almost goes up and gets it. It's going to be a turnover for Crestview, and Fisher's going to be in the run out. Four minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter of action. Fisher off-balance shot. Maxwell tried to battle for the rebound, isn't going to get it, and that's going to be a turnover for the St. Paul Flyers. Fisher Storm going for a little bit of fishy, fishy. Couldn't get it to go right there with the air ball. 
We are four points away, Storm, from a running clock here. Three minutes and 55 seconds ago. That time could speed up if Chris Hugh can get four on the board. You know, McDonald's fish sandwich, actually, a filet fish doesn't sound too bad right now. Perfect amount of tartar sauce, perfect amount of cheese. Sounds pretty good, actually. We are here to call a basketball game storm and not think about food. Hey, you brought McDonald's into it. Is That's a block from Maxwell, and Crestview's going to take it out of bounds. So, hey, I just, I just, I just feed off of you, Garrett. You know that. Raymer set to inbound for the Cougars. All the way out to Ringler. Works it inside to Stewart. He goes up. That's going to be a foul as Maxwell thought he got it clean. That's going to be two opportunities for Stewart at the free throw line. We always harp, not to swipe down here, Storm, but I think this is a clean block. That's nothing but ball. It, it's hard because Noah Stewart wasn't able to get the ball up in the air, so it looks like he came down on his arm. So the stripes, as we mentioned, swipe down. Even if you get all ball, the chip is going to call it. And I think it might have been a little bit to do with that offhand kind of pushing out, but hey, there's a reason I'm not down there in the stripes. Cressy looks to pour it on Storm as Carter Kissel is going to check in the game. Carter Kissel from where, Garrett? Kissel's long caring spraying and painting Storm, one of our generous sponsors here tonight. And they've been really sponsoring us whole entire OH report come up here, especially at Crestview. Oh, I thought Kissel was going to shoot that one. I'm sorry. But <laughs> took my breath away as Spore has it on the right wing. Ringler resets it. Raymer now has it. Dribbles to his right. Spore on the three-point arc decides not to take it. Crestview really just trying to use as much clock as possible. Three minutes left and running. Almost a turnover there from Kissel. Outside now is Raymer going inside. Off balance to Spore. What a pass. Too strong. Not going to get it to go. And that's going to be St. Paul ball, Garrett. I was really hoping we were going to see a Kissel three right there. Look like the varsity game jitters got to him. Storm, a little bit of bobble there on the three-point wing. Almost had a turnover, but he's going to stay in the game. So Co Coach Kurtz is going to let him have his opportunity here. Three minutes remaining in this finals conference uh, action. Kissel now on defense as Dieter's on offense. Working it inside. Oh, my goodness. Spore off the glass. Wow, a run out now. Baith the other way. Spin move. Takes it himself. Fall away. Try. Not going to go, and St. Paul's going to slow it back down. What a sequence of events, Garrett. It's been a block party here in the fourth quarter, especially. Stewart's had a few blocks. Barker, and now Spore getting on the action, sending that cheese out of this Cougars den, and Stewart went for it again, so I'm not going to get it this time. Spore now on the outlet pass. Spin move. Gets it to go, Garrett. Kissel was right there. I really, really wanted it, but not going to happen as Spore gets the two-pointer to fall. Nonetheless, Spore with a tremendous move right there at the cup, using the spin move, putting the defender in the blender for two. A little bit of bias here on this broadcast, only, of course, when Kissel checks in is that three-pointer's not going to fall. As Hip comes down with it, three-point try now from Deppin. Two strong offensive rebound for the Flyers. Three-point fake dribble inside. Mid-range shot, not going to go. Another offensive rebound for St. Paul, and that time it falls for two. It was just a struggle for points all night long for the Flyers. They're going to go back to Norwalk with a loss. Still not being able to pick up that illustrious first win, Storm. And Crestview going to go unbeaten as Noah Stewart is going to put the icing on the cake with a two-pointer and a beautiful assist from Kissel. Of course a beautiful assist from Kissel is. Now he records his stat of the night for uh, for the Cougars. And hey, trying to make a, a late run at our in our MVP voting, Garrett. St. Paul on offense, I can tell you're speechless from what I just had to say. So Deppin now on offense, gets it over to Dieter. Bring the right there on him. Three point try for the Flyers. Not going to go battle for the rebound down low. That's going to be a jump ball position. Arrow points towards the Cougars. Shouldn't have to do anything but dribble out the clock here. As the lone starter left on the floor checks out, Jarek Ringler and Wells will check in for him. And the Cougar Storm should pick up a big win here. 
And Garrett, I believe you're a little preoccupied, but I said with that assist, Kissel trying to make a late run at our MVP tonight. Not with the performance Owen Barker has had, Storm. Tremendous down low. I don't think Kissel is up there just yet. He's got a few more years. Oh, all righty, all righty. Dieter has it for the St. Paul offense. 20 seconds left here to go in the fourth quarter. That's going to be a foul on who else but Kissel. It's going to be out of bounds, and St. Paul with another opportunity to run a stack play. Don't think it's in their playbook, though. Stewart with another block as Spore is in the run out. He goes up all the way in a fancy aerial attack as he gets that one to go for two. Ten seconds left to go, and all St. Paul has to do is take a floater in the lane. Another offensive rebound goes for two, but that's going to do it here in the fourth quarter. Your final tonight from the Cougars Den. 66 to 37 in favor of the Crestview Cougars. Going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a player of the game interview. But for now, you've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel.
standing now with our player of the game, powered by who else but the OH Report, and of course, Owen Barker dropping in 26 points, and you were just getting it done. Big body barbecue chicken down in the lane. Talk to me about those post moves you had there, especially in the first quarter. Um, that was our goal coming into the game, uh, was to get it down low and uh, work in the post, move the ball around, and it was just our goal of the game was to get it low. Pretty sure you single-handedly made uh, St. Paul switch to a 2-3 zone. How does it feel to demand that much attention on the offensive end? Uh, it feels good. I mean, uh, we all worked hard as a team, and uh, I think all of us, the, our, the guards had great passes inside to me, and uh, we were working on the defensive end. It was good. 2-0 and now in the conference, uh, well, uh, well away to a, co a conference championship. I know it's early in the season, but just talk to me about, you know, those Firelands conference rival games you got on schedule. We can definitely win all of our games on the Firelands conference, and we know we can. We just have to work at it and come out and play, like, in the first half and the rest of the game, really, like we did tonight, come out and play hard and play fast. Alrighty, thank you very much, Owen. Go out and enjoy this one. Thank you very much for your time. That is going to do it. We're going to take a quick break. Owen Barker, once again, your MVP. But for now, you've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Here we go now. Here we go now. for some big name spokesperson. Casasa checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing. Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top of the line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hardworking, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Welcome back to the Cougars Den, where we have a final of 66 to 37 in favor of your home court Crestview Cougars. Storm Blunchley, as always, joined by the myth, the man, some might say the legend, 
Others might say the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And uh, Garrett, you know, I think let's just kind of get into these final stats here. And uh, as we take a look at them, you got Crestview with 22 field goals, four threes, 26 rebounds, 13 fouls, six turnovers, shooting four of five from the charity stripe for the St. Paul Flyers. 13 field goals, zero threes, 19 rebounds, 11 fouls, 12 turnovers, shooting six of eight from the free throw stripe. Garrett, give me your takeaways from this fourth quarter and this whole game. I've been dominating here throughout the whole entire season. I've been holding opponents you know, under 50 points a game, and Heath Cash and Owen Barker, man, they're going to be a serious dynamic duo, the front court guard and then the down low with Owen Barker. It's going to be hard to guard somebody who gets down low and gets that kind of size and gets that foot in the paint and uses that power. And then you can kick it out to Heath Cash and knock down three. So it's going to be a struggle to stop this Crescent team, but we'll see what they can do in the Firelands Conference. They haven't won a championship storm as we've seen that last shot since 2000. Kind of like me and you at Gam's house almost, that dynamic duo. You get it to me in the post, I kick it out to you, you splash home the three. I mean, hey, bread and butter, man, bread and butter. And the thing is, too, defensively, you would think that Crestview can struggle at times, but they don't. Even when the bench comes in, th their, their strength is their defense. And when they get out in the full court press and they suffocate and they force a bunch of turnovers, it's hard to stop a team that can get in the in the fast break and then kick it out to wide open shooters like Jared Grinkler and Heath Cash we've seen tonight. So Crestview is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Finals Conference. Once again, your final score, 66 to 37 in favor of the Crestview Cougars. Next up for St. Paul, they'll be Versus, or facing excuse me, New London, and that'll be on Saturday. And next up for the Cougars on a very special doubleheader, we'll have, uh, I believe, the girls game first at 6, then the boys game at 7.30. So they'll be here at the Cougars Den versus Western Reserve, and that'll be, of course, on Saturday. Garrett, me and you will both be at Northmore covering the girls once again on an early matinee showcase. So three potential live streams you can catch uh, on Saturday for us, if you like you know, live and free high school hoops, of course. But I think that's going to wrap things up here on our broadcast. Want to take a second to thank, of course, everyone on the crew tonight. Of course, the illustrious Garrett Parlett, as well as Hayden Gray locking it down on the cameras, Adam Thompson, graphics, and bringing all those pretty colors at your face, as well as I want to thank our fabulous sponsors, as without them, this would be impossible, as well as, of course, you, the fans at home, watching as without you as well this would be impossible so big shout out to all those folks and uh, i think that's going to do it. we're going to wrap it up here at the cougars den once again your final score 66 to 37 always remember you've been watching high school hoops live and free on the oh report